School of Rock is a musical about a low-life guy who wants to be a rock star and finds his way into an unearned job uh, subbing for some kids who are very good at playing music. And recently, I was given the opportunity to go see School of Rock. And these are my impressions of the musical. So let's start with the leads. Robert Coletti was spectacular in the role of Dewey Finn or Mr. Schneebly. Being a lover of the original film, I feel like they really captured the essence of Jack Black. With every joke written, he was spot on with delivery. My favorite moment of this character is when he asked if smacking the children was okay when he first started the job. The Robert Coletti, he he did an amazing job because because he really brought the character to life, you know. He made he made Dewey Finn seem like the kind of guy you would just see on a regular basis. Lexi Dorset Sharp, she played Mrs. Mullins, or Rosalie Mullins, and performed excellently in the role. Her her singing voice was beautiful, and especially in the song, Where Did the Rock Go? That being said, I did have one criticism about, about uh, Lexi Dorset Sharp. Um, <clears throat> periodically, she did make it very apparent that this role was written for Sierra Bogus. She, many times she couldn't really reach the notes that she was supposed to. Like, um, she kind of leveled out a little bit lower. She, she played it off well, but she didn't really hit the notes that she was supposed to. But this happened so infrequently that it, it didn't impede upon her performance. And she was still so beautiful in the role. And I think, I still think the role was excellently done. Good on you, Lexi Dorset Sharp. So, uh, major supporting roles. Um, <clears throat> let's start with the role of Ned Schneebly, the real Ned Schneebly. Matt Bittner was was hilarious. He he brought the he brought this the squirmy, anxiety ridden character to life. Like um, he really he really like made the character of Ned Schneebly what he was supposed to be he he really displayed a character that was wanting to be more than he actually was but like it feels trapped by fear of what a failure of what could happen emily borromeo she played patty DeMarco, and um let me just say for a character that's written to be over the top she she knocked that out of the park like i swear i was sitting up in the balcony and I'm pretty sure she made, like, the little kid in front of me say the first cuss word he had ever said. Like, I cannot, like, describe to you the, the level of, like, malevolence that came out of this, this character. And it was brilliant. Like, I thought, I thought this character was supposed to be, like, a demon who was, like, sucking the, the, the dreams out of people. But she brought, like, Satan level stuff and i absolutely adored it it was amazing she she really like hated on uh on dewey finn and it was it was hilarious to watch and god i think i actually like on a sub level i actually hate this 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 character in a good way like like the way an audience member should like I, like she made me hate the character and and that's the best job she could have done and so, good on you, Emily Baromia. So this being School of Rock, a big part of it are the kids. And there are a lot of kids. So many, though, that I wouldn't be able to talk about each one of them individually. Also, um, the, the, the musical itself doesn't really focus on all of them individually. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover, I think I have four down to cover. So let's start with Phoenix Schumann. He played Zach Moynihan, and he was like a young, white Jimi Hendrix. He, like, he shredded on the guitar. His acting was substantial for a person of his age, but he, he made 
the guitar his witch. Let's uh let's 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 keep away from cussing. Witch with a B. There you go, right there. So Ava Briglia was in the role of Summer, and she, in my honest opinion, was the best child actress out on stage. She brought the role of of Summer to life and like she brought Summer's role of being a determined and um, focused person with a uh, I'm not taking any of your crap attitude. It was amazing. She did amazing and it was it was it was beautiful to watch her her perform. One little critique I had um, it's not her performance but it was more of the character, the writing for the character. There was an incessant level of political jammer that came out of this character. Um, not that I, not that I didn't agree with what was said. I I agreed with everything that was said. Um, there was a, the one that I I really remember was the one about the pay gap, and um and I agreed with what she said. But I just didn't feel like it fit with the narrative enough to be said in the way that it was. Like, um, for example, this can be done well. And my example is um, in On Your Feet, the character Emilio um, says something along the, line, along the lines of, this is what an American looks like, while he's gesturing towards himself and talking to the musical producer that they are talking to. And... Uh, and it was done well in that sense, but it wasn't really done as well in this musical. I feel like it could have been done well if it was just a little bit more, like, um, like low key. Thinking not not thinking of a better word. If it were like done on a more subservient level, it would have been better. But they came right out and said it, and it was it wasn't it wasn't written well in my opinion. But I digress, and my uh, my belief is that Ava did in a phenomenal job in the acting, and I adored her in the role of Summer. So, Gilberto Moretti Hamilton, he played the role of the drummer Freddy. He, he beat the skin so hard that you could have called it Poland in the 1930s. Like, he... He was an absolute rock star on the drums, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and uh, be and being beat as my second favorite part of music, he like he supplied in the in the largest way possible, and uh, especially in the title song that he even got like the conductor rocking out because uh, the conductor wasn't conducting anything. And so he just, the conductor was just like, he he pulled up the devil horns and started rocking out to it. And it was awesome. It was hilarious too. Like, uh, it was an old white man. And, and he was just like, yeah, let's do this. Rock and roll. And it was hilarious. Theodora Silverman. Now she was my favorite part of the whole musical. She played Katie, the, uh, the bass. After being rudely interrupted by my family, uh, who wanted me to cook breakfast for them. That's what I did. Um, where was I? Theodora Silverman. No, she was my favorite part of the whole musical. Because um, I might be a little biased because I do love the bass. Um, it's my favorite instrument uh, used in rock and roll. Um, she played the role of Katie, the bassist for the um, band in School of Rock. And she... She actually killed it on the bass. She like kept the rhythm afloat in such awesome ways. Like uh, I, I felt her music in my soul, man. Like it was, it was awesome. And again, I could be biased because I love the bass, but you know what? Screw it. I am biased. If I were on a jury, I would one hundred percent be kicked off. And uh, all of the kids were amazing. Um, the the flamboyant costume designer was fun to watch, and. Um, and since I only covered a few of them, I'm gonna give a blanket statement saying that I admire and uh, and I and I adore all of them because they were they were all really awesome to watch. Um, yeah. So now for my favorite and least favorite song. My favorite song of the whole musical was "Where Did the Rock Go." It um it's a song about like 
social conformity and being forced into being something that you don't want to be, but are pressured into doing it. And, and it's also about having, still having that passionate fire within you that eventually bursts, um, like into like a flaming ball of passion. And, uh, it was, it was a beautiful song and it was, it was sung by Lexi Dorset Sharp and it was, it was the best part of the musical for me because it, it was amazing because it just like, I think it, it can apply to everybody. I, f I feel like we all are kind of pressured into being things that we're, we don't want to be. And I think it addressed completely that we all miss what we used to be and what we want to be. And that on, on a lower level, we are still that those people that we want to be. And, but still on the outside, we have to be socially conformed. My least favorite song was If You Would Only Listen. And um, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber has written some of my favorite musicals. But it's a common thread for him, in my opinion, um, that he either knocks it out of the park or completely misses the ball. And for me, this was just a missed ball. Because it's just, there wasn't really any redeeming part of the song for me. And I just I didn't like it. I kind of just had to sit through a, a a whiny song that I that I really didn't like. Like they they could have it could have been done in a way that it didn't require a song. Like it could the message of the song, which is um, we have parents that don't care. It could have been just written and be, become like like a sub level fact. Like like it could have been implied, but it didn't really need to be going out and saying it. And if they were to go out and say it, I think it could have been, the song could have been written better. And it just wasn't. I wish it were. I wish I could have said that I love the song, but I just, I just didn't. And it, it's sad. I'm sure people like it. And if you do like it, I'm, I'm happy for you. Love the song. But it just, it, it wasn't that for me. So my favorite moment in, uh, in the musical was when the character Tamika played by Gianna Harris sang um, the first verse of Amazing Grace. It was beautiful. There was a very very small amount of autotune at the beginning, but uh, once she started getting a bit more powerful, her, her voice did come in, and it was... She has an amazing voice, Gianna Harris, um, and it was so cool. And so it was an awesome moment for the entire musical when she... Um, sang Amazing Grace and got the uh, the solo in the song that was going to be played later at Battle of the Bands and it was it was a nice moment my least favorite moment was uh, the for was again the forced political um, dialogue from Summer I feel like I've made that point known so I'm not going to really stress it again and random fact total time spent in the bathroom line was 14 minutes and 27 seconds uh that was the fastest I've ever urinated and then ran back to my seat to see Act 2 so I wouldn't miss anything. Fun fact. And I love the performance. Um, I walked in not knowing if I was going to like it or not. Uh, and I walked out loving the musical. So the tour cast did what they needed to do and they got me to love the musical. It was awesome. Uh, I'll rate my experience. 9 out of 10 if you have the opportunity to go see the musical I highly recommend it and uh, do it because it was a, it was a fun experience and um, the kids are great the adults are great it was hella worth it to go see it and yeah thank you for watching this uh, it was mainly just me yammering about how much I, I love this musical but I just that's what I wanted this to be so thank you for watching